Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We're sitting here under these nice lights. We're going to talk a little bit about a commodity. And before you start uh, pulling out your phones and texting, I promise you, it's a very exciting commodity we're going to talk about. In fact, some might think it's the most important commodity we, as a society, as generations, are going to have to deal with in the next 20 years. Yet, it's a commodity we know nothing about. Truly, nothing about. In fact, we don't know what it costs. We don't know what we pay for it. We don't know how we get it. Yet, it's probably the most important commodity. And it's a commodity if you had a son or a daughter who was running in the Boston Marathon that unfortunate day and they forgot to charge their cell phone. You know, you couldn't get in touch with them the next day. You knew this commodity was something that brought us sanity, communication. If you had a mother or father who's on a breather or ventilator, and you were here in Hoboken, and we lost power for five, six, ten days, you know, this commodity can be more important than the air you actually breathe. And if you are somebody who lives next to a water treatment plant, or you re require pumps to keep water out of your basement while we're here in Hoboken, then you know that this commodity can be a lifesaver, and without it, Truly, it can be very difficult to live with. Yet you think about this commodity, that's right, energy I'm talking about, and it's a commodity that you ask yourself, what do you know? And so start out in your mind thinking about this commodity and what you pay for it, individually. You all know what you pay for it, right? I dare to say there's probably two people here who know the actual price, but here's the more fun part. You don't know what you pay for the commodity, that keeps everything going, that everybody talks about global warming, that keeps your cell phone charged, you don't know what to pay for it. But it, at least you know how to describe it, right? What it's measured in. Well, if you just said the word watts in your mind, then you can go to the sports bar with me and we can see if the Yankees are up by three touchdowns because that's about equivalent to what you just thought. So, we're gonna make all these major decisions about global warming and polar bears and solar and nuclear and whether we buy fancy light bulbs we don't know what it costs. We don't know how we measure this commodity. And let me give you a little fact about the commodity, which most people don't know. The commodity changes price every second. Energy, real time, real price, every second. And in fact, in one state, the commodity can cost one price, and in another state, 10 times that price. So I want you to picture you driving down I-95, slowly, and stopping at every box store to get, let's say, another commodity, right? A gallon of milk. Well, could you imagine stopping and the gallon of milk in one state is $3, but in the next state it's $30? <laughs> Can you imagine stopping and sometimes the commodity is priced at half, sometimes it's three times, sometimes it's a third. You wait there. But here's the funny part. Unlike those box stores that have the big red light sale, where do you get your prices from? Have you looked at your thermostats? Everybody know what we're paying right now for energy? Well, this idea that we're about to make these monumental decisions and we don't know what we're dealing with can be easily cured. And I'm, I'm going to tell you how to cure what I call the SDT disease. No, it's not what you think I just said. <laughs> That's for a totally different doctor, I promise you. This STD is called supply, demand, transmission. SDT, not STD. This supply, demand, transmission is how energy works and yet we don't know and so we're going to run through a quick exercise about this first supply well supply is just where do we get our energy from you see all these lights and all these wonderful things on where's it coming from coal nuclear solar gas wind peaker plants i'll explain those in a second where does it come from and let me give you a little story we here in new jersey um we think we're cooler than everybody else in case you don't know um, but um, we have a little interesting secret. Our power, let's take our nuclear plant. We have a nuclear plant in this state that is so old, um, and for those who love The Simpsons, this is a great moment, it's so old that The Simpsons plant is much newer. It predates us. And why is that? Well, I can tell because our plant doesn't have a cooling tower. It's so old. What's a cooling tower? It's that infamous tower for those who remember Three Mile Island. You know what it looks like for those who know The Simpsons. You also know what it looks like. It's a cooling tower. Our nuclear plant, one of the oldest in the country, doesn't have one. So how does it cool itself? Well, it's easy. It takes millions, hundreds of millions of gallons from rivers in training and in trapping, killing, in case you don't know what that means, millions of fish every day, every hour. And what it does is it dumps that water back out into a river. Here's the best part for all of us who are so cool. That river gets so hot in the wintertime 
that it has an artificial fish population for those who missed the three-eyed fish episode of The Simpsons. <laughs> so we have energy supply, and we need to do something because everybody is waiting for the magic technology, the cure. Everybody look around. Your lights, your phones. We have to build a supply. We have nuclear plants that are so old that don't have cooling towers. We have a coal plant right here next door in lovely New Jersey, and they're ancient, so we have to build new supply. But that's only the first of our dilemma. We have demand. This is the tricky part, demand, because the supply can keep up with the demand 90% of the time. But for 10% of the time, we can't do it. And I want you to imagine this in the supply world. For some reason, people struggle with energy, but they understand water. So if you and your neighbor, hello neighbor, if you're watching on, online, hello computer, you and your neighbor are going to share one drop of water for 364 days, right? Picture it in your head, but it's 2013. We don't talk to our neighbors. We're going to deliver it by a pipe, right? In this case, maybe a straw. I want you to think what that looks like. But for one day a year, Thanksgiving, we're going to need about 1,000 gallons of water because we've got the whole family coming over that we need to borrow. Again, we don't bring it over, plus it would be a large container. So we're going to build a pipe. This is one that most of my college students get right. So hold on. How big is the pipe? There's an answer. There's an actual answer. The pipe is a 1,000 gallon pipe. Why? Because on one day, I need to get 1,000 gallons through, right? So I designed this pipe for the one day. Welcome to energy. Energy demand, 90% of the time we have enough energy to keep up with it. These are your coal and your nuclear and all your plants that you see, but for 10% of the time, we have to turn on what we call peakers. These are jet engines, borrowed off your favorite airplanes, for real, not kidding. They turn them upside down, they put them in a box. Sometimes they're fueled with kerosene, sometimes oil, sometimes gas. They have no pollution controls, they're the dirtiest energy in the world. And we burn them outright. If you've ever driven by the turnpike at exit 9, you'll see the yellow haze as it comes up. It's wonderful. It's like a mirage. <laughs> we turn these things on to keep up with that moment. And let me explain, think of the water analogy, when that moment happens, right? So it's 2.30 in the afternoon. Fast forward, everybody. Sorry for all the other speakers. We're 2.30, right? And something happens here in New Jersey. How many people are parents? How many people knows what happens at 2.30 approximately? Kids get out of school. They come running home. And here, I want you to think about that water again. Here comes our one day for the 1,000 gallons. See, sitting somewhere in central Pennsylvania, all of our supplies are being measured. And at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, we're up. The schools are up. People are up. Everybody's going. And all of a sudden, the school kids come home. And with one hand, they hit a remote. With one hand, they open the refrigerator. And with a foot, they turn on video games. And you watch the demand go way up. And all of a sudden, we run out of supply. And we don't turn the lights off, right? What we do is we turn on those peaker plants for those minutes, run all that infrastructure. And I want you to picture the pipes outside or the wires and the lines outside and picture the pole. It's leaning at 30 degrees because it's got so much stuff on it. Remember the thousand gallons. We're preparing for peak. All of that is built in to accommodate those minutes that we have. Now, somebody in this audience or watching may go, hmm, it's funny, we could build more supply, nuclear plants, coal plants, or Maybe we could lower our demand for that 10% of the time. Maybe. Well, in our world of not catching any diseases, we have supply and demand, but we must watch transmission. Transmission, how you get it here, those wires I just talked about. People have this weird concept that energy just shows up but doesn't actually get delivered. And if you live through the storm with trees falling or you're in a place where you've lost power because something knocked your power line down, or you've ever just looked out your window and thought, that's a great view in New York City, minus those 300 power lines in front of me. This transmission is something that we take for granted, but it's aging, it's having troubles. And by the way, the further away our supply is from our demand, the transmission has to carry it. And if it's energy when you make it here, by the time it gets to your house and steps up and down and loses its efficiency, you're getting about 30% of what you actually paid for. One more time, feel like going into the Walmart, buying a gallon of milk, you don't know what it costs, you have no idea when it costs what, and great, you know what you get for it? A third of a gallon that you actually pay, because the transmission is so bad. So from here on in, when people begin to ask you questions about, should we support fracking? Should we build a new nuclear plant? That's one question absent the other two, and you're not practicing safe energy, by the way. You must look at supply, demand, transmission. Let me give you just an example and then tell you what I'd like you all to do when you go home. So eight years ago, 
coming on nine years ago, we made a big discovery, a technology break. And we found something out in central Pennsylvania. And we found something in North Dakota. We found shale, gas, fracking. Many people have had great opinions of this fracking. Some good, some bad. I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to tell you that we found a supply eight years ago. Come on, everybody. What has to come next? A demand. I'm sorry, are, how many people live in North Dakota? How many people in central Pennsylvania? Right. So the demand for all that gas isn't there, is it? It's over here, right? And so fast forward to the last two years of fighting, town by town, and fighting in our watershed because they're building a new gas pipeline through right here. And everybody fought, I'm sorry folks, that decision was made eight years ago when you found the supply. So from here on in, when you go home, open your energy bill, take a look, don't be naive to where your supply comes from. Look at your demand. When do you want that energy? Look at what you're paying for that peak. And the next time you start thinking about internal decisions, should I put solar on my house? That's a supply. Are you ever home in the day? No. Hmm. Maybe not the right choice. I'm running through this huge peak at 2.30 because I'm home during the day. Should I update my lights and change my thermostat? Well, that's my demand. And when I look at the peak, it turns out that's the most expensive electricity and the dirtiest. And so, if all of us can take a look at this commodity, can figure out that it relies on everything we do, your phones, the timers, the clocks, and think about what happens when you don't have it, we need a plan. And we need a plan for the next 20 years because we are not going to turn that power off. And I encourage all of you, go home, look at those bills, and frankly, make sure those cell phones are charged. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.